Hi everyone, this is the second video in my short series on isolated voltage measurement. Today we're still going to be looking at light, but this time using analog optical transmission. Let's get started. Now the first thing we need is an analog photocouple. Unfortunately, the only ones I have, and the ones I used in the previous video, are intended for digital use. Which means if you try and drive the LED inside them in between on and off states, the output isn't very predictable, it's definitely not linear in any way. You can get analog optocouples, but as I don't have one, we're going to try and make one out of an infrared LED and an infrared photodiode. So my plan is basically just to wrap them up in tape, one facing the other just like that, and we'll see how that goes. So you can see I've got them both stuck on the tape here, now I'm just going to try and wrap it around them a bit. I don't know how many how many turns of tape I'll need. It's basically I just need to make sure there's absolutely no infrared leaking its way in. There we go. I'm going to give this a quick test now. Now it seems to be working. What I have as a test setup here is the power supply on this end is connected to the infrared LED and then on this end we have the multimeter in current sensing mode um, on the output of the photodiode. Then you can see here we've got the power supply, multimeter, this is in milliamps, so right now it's 16 microamps is what it's reading. And I've turned the voltage up so it's sitting on the current limit. As I turn the current up, the current reading from the photodiode increases. And that's basically all we can ask for at this point. Just confirms their coupling nicely. Now in case you're wondering, the reason I'm using current instead of voltage is that LEDs and photodiodes are both current driven devices and what that means is basically if you're going to try and drive an LED with a fixed voltage a very small change in voltage will change the current through it quite a lot so it's better to control the current than control the voltage also generally for an ideal LED or photodiode the current and light intensity are proportional that's sort of why this in theory should work perfectly it definitely won't but the current that we put through the, the LED should create a light intensity that's proportional to that current and then that light intensity should then create a current in the photodiode that's proportional. Then we just need two op amps, which I have over here, to convert voltage to current and then current back to voltage. And just like last time I'm going to be using this isolated DC-DC converter to power the op amp on the input side. Right, so I've made the input side of the circuit. You can see these are the legs of the photodiode, which I'm going to check with the multimeter again. Isolated DC-DC, we've got 5 volts in on this side, just like in the previous video. Then isolated 5 volts on this side. For the op amp, what we've got is we've got our input voltage coming in on this purple wire, and that comes into the non-inverting input of the op amp. Then the output of the op amp goes through the LED, I'll see if there you can see it better, through the LED, then that goes through a 1K resistor to ground. That 1K resistor acts a bit like a current shunt, so because it's 1K, if I have 1 milliamp going through our LED, then we have 1 volt across this resistor. So it will put a current through here that's a thousand times less than the voltage on the input, because this then feeds back to the inverting input of the op amp. So for example, if I have 3 volts on the input, the op amp will do whatever it needs to to get 3 volts on the other input, which would be 3 volts across this 1K resistor. 3 volts across 1K would be 3 milliamps, and that would be 3 milliamps flowing through our LED. So let's just check that bit of the circuit by looking at the output current that's generated on the photodiode. Now we're definitely getting something here, because you can see when I turn up the output voltage with the function generator, the current into the multimeter does go up. But, at about 1 volt, up to 2 we get a bit more, and then we hit a hard limit. So, I'm going to have a think about why that might be. Now after a quick look at the circuit, it looks like the problem we've probably got is that these op amps are a bit shit. So it can't drive the output, which is going to the LED, higher than about 3 volts. Because really these op amps are designed to run on a much higher supply voltage. So I'm going to swap them for some rail to rail op amps and see if that fixes our problem. Right, I've swapped the op amp, so now we've got the photo DIY photo coupler here. And this is looking a lot more promising. We're not getting much output at 1 volt, but we go up to 2, 
three, four, and we're getting some kind of output. Next I just need to add in a second op amp for the output. Right, and that's the circuit all done. Now I think what I've done here is quite nice, so I will show you. Here's the photo couple, here's the output from the photo diode. The positive leg goes to the ground rail, the negative leg is on the input to an inverting amplifier. So basically the current is going to be flowing in this direction. So it's going to be sucking current out of this circuit. And because that's connected to the input to an op amp, it can't get any current from there. So it has to suck the current through the feedback resistor, which I've used a trimmer for. And that can only get current from the output. Then because we're pulling current through a resistor, there's a voltage across it. And that voltage is our output, which is proportional to the current through the photodiode. Now by adjusting the value of that trimmer, you can see I can turn down or turn up the output voltage. So I'm going to set this so that it's exactly 3. There we go, 3 volts out, 3 volts in. But now you're going to see how shocking the linearity is on this circuit. Because if I turn this down to 2 volts, we're getting 1.7 out. If I turn it down to 1 volt, we're getting 0.6 out. But for a completely DIY open loop system, I'm not surprised it's pretty bad. So now I'm going to go through, like in the last video, do all the readings, pop it on the Excel, and we'll take a look. Right, well I've finished all my readings now. Just before I show you the graphs, I wanted to show how amazing the frequency response of this is compared to the method used in the previous video of pulse width modulation. This is a 20 kilohertz signal, and it's barely being attenuated at all. It's just coming straight through. And you'll see the interesting trade-off that we've had to make, where we've sacrificed some linearity, but we've gained a lot of bandwidth. And I suppose if you took that to the extreme, you'd end up with the with a digital isolator where you've got no linearity because it's just off or on, but you can toggle it at millions of times a second. Right, so here's the plot for our linearity. You can see it's not actually too bad, with probably the most notable discrepancy at the bottom where there's a very much noticeable curve. At the top, you can also see it getting clamped at 4.5 volts. That's due to the op-amp circuit used as the non-inverting amplifier on the output, so I wouldn't really worry about that. But yeah, overall, looks pretty decent, especially when we take into consideration the frequency response, which is looking really good, almost flat up to over a kilohertz, which, if you can remember back to the previous video, is miles better than the PWM method. At the end of this video, I'll do a comparison with all of them. Also, I imagine this roll-off is probably caused by the op-amps, not by the photodiode and LED pair, because the output amplifier has a very high gain, and the op-amps I'm using only have a gain bandwidth product of about 1 meg, so that's probably where our roll-off's coming from. This was just meant for quick demonstration though, so I'm not really concerned. We can see that it's better than the pulse width modulation, but that also had quite a lot of scope for improvement, so what can you do? So the next thing I want to do is make a change with the goal of improving linearity. And what that is, is the addition of some feedback, which I'm going to implement in a way that I've stolen from a photo diode I found online. There's, there's quite a few that actually do this. But let's take a look at the datasheet for that and see how that works. So this particular optocoupler is made by Vichy, which means we already know it's going to be very nice. And you can see in applications, Galvanically isolated voltage sensing. That's exactly what we want. Basically, the way it works is just like a normal photocoupler, you've got an LED and a photodiode, but the part that makes this one interesting is that there's another performance matched photodiode. So basically, there's two photodiodes there, and they're going to get exactly the same amount of light, and they're going to have exactly the same response. And what that means is you can take the output from this one and use it as feedback, therefore allowing you to compensate for all of the non-linearity of the photodiode and the LED. Because then you don't need a perfect LED, you don't need a perfect photodiode, all you need is two photodiodes that are perfectly matched. And basically what this means is, yeah, if you put a little op-amp here with some feedback or something, you can get a perfectly linear response. So you can see they call it a linear optocoupler. And this can offer linearity as low as 0.25%, which is insane. Now, unfortunately, I do not have one of these, but let's have a go at making one. So what I want to do now is recreate that with a second photodiode. 
Now the most important thing by miles is that the two of these are getting an equal share of light from the photodiode. So I'm going to construct it in a similar way. I'm going to get a little bit of tape, lay them down, try and get it really nice and even, and then wrap loads of tape around. In fact, what I've decided to do is start off with one wrap of this double-sided tape because it's nice and spongy, which should help hold them in place and align them a bit better. So here's that. Let's start by popping in our LED. So that just wants to stick like that. Now I just need two photodiodes opposite it. This is what I've ended up with. I think it's probably as good as we're going to get. So the light comes from the LED into the two photodiodes and the idea is that they get a completely equal share of that light and one can be used as feedback. Now I'll just wrap this up. There we go. Who needs to buy a commercial photodiode when you can get something that looks this good? Now I just need to adapt the circuit to accept the feedback coming from the second photodiode. So I'll do that and then explain how it works. Right, it took a while, but here's the finished circuit. It's a bit of a mess, so hopefully I can show you guys how it's working. I don't really want to touch the circuit too much because the coupling between these, the LED and the two photodiodes is very influential on how, the, how well the circuit works. And if I touch it, I can move them around slightly. So hiding under here, there's a dual op-amp IC. This could just be done with a single op-amp on the measurement side, but seeing as it's a dual chip anyway, I'm just using two to make it a bit easier to, to think about. One of them is basically just like a voltage buffer, so we've got our input voltage coming from the function generator, and then that's on the non-inverting input, and on the inverting input we have the output of our transconductance amplifier, which is giving us a voltage proportional to the current detected by the photodiode that's being used for feedback. That's what the second op amp's for in this dual chip. Just like the output op amp was wired before, the current that the photodiode generates pulls a voltage through this 100k resistor, and that voltage is then used as our feedback. So basically the first op amp will adjust the LED current so that the output of the second op amp, which feeds back into it, matches the input. And because the output of that second op amp should theoretically be identical to the output of the output op amp over here, that should greatly improve our linearity. Then over here on the output we have the same thing as, as we had before really, so the output from the second photodiode just comes over, gets amplified in an inverting amplifier, and again I've got an adjustable gain. Looking at the function generator in the multimeter, we can already see this is looking very promising. When I go to one volt, ooh, exactly one volt, that's looking very good. Now I can't help but notice that when I go to 3 we only get 2.5 out, but we'll wait to see on the plot what's actually going on. I don't really mind if it's not linear over the full 5 volt range, even if it's only linear between say 1 and 3 volts or something like that. Then that shows that if you had a higher supply voltage, because that's the thing, 5 volts is quite a low supply voltage for op amps. Realistically you want more like maybe plus minus 10 volts on a bipolar supply or something like that. Again, this is just a simple circuit just for demonstration. So now I'm going to go through again reading this at loads of voltages and we'll take a look at the plots. So here's the linearity and we can see clearly something has gone horribly wrong. It looks like it sort of follows the open loop curve up to about 1.8 volts input. Then it just goes completely mental. Also below around half a volt in it's a bit weird as well. This is probably because the feedback circuit on the measurement side doesn't work very well. And also these photodiodes are very cheap, so they're not, they're not very linear and they're definitely not very well matched. Because I did have a look at the output of the amplifier connected to the feedback photodiode, and that was following the input quite nicely, so I'd set it to 1 volt and you get 1 volt out, 2 volts, 2 volts out. So it's a bit annoying really because this system with a second photodiode for feedback does work very well, like we saw on that Vichy datasheet. But just unfortunately, this very half-assed implementation, not very surprisingly, doesn't work at all. Now here's the frequency response. While I was measuring this, it was very hard to get good measurements because the signal was just doing all kinds of weird things. But you can see, again, this circuit just basically hasn't worked very well. 
we're dropping off before we even reach 1 kilohertz, which is quite a lot worse than when we were in open loop configuration. And as I say, the output was far from sinusoidal. Whereas, as you saw earlier when I showed the scope screen, open loop was producing really nice clean output. Now here's a much more interesting plot. This is comparing the linearity of the optical pulse width modulation method used in the previous video to the analog method used in this video. And you can see, although it's non-linear, especially when compared to the PWM, which is extremely linear, it's not actually that bad. And I imagine for quite a lot of measurements, this would probably be all right, especially when you take into account the frequency response, which absolutely annihilates the pulse width modulation method. It's crazy. PWM couldn't even reach 10 hertz without some significant drop off. This has a flat response up to a few kilohertz. And as I mentioned earlier, just a change in the op amp would improve that even further. You might have noticed on the datasheet for that Vichet photodiode as well, that has a bandwidth of 1.4 megahertz. So that's, that's the upper limits of what this method can do. And you can see even this with just a random LED and photodiodes taped together, we were still getting an output at one meg, which is really impressive. Right, well that was pretty disappointing to be honest. I shouldn't have had such high expectations because making something like that yourself with feedback's never gonna work brilliantly. But tell you what, if this video gets 50 likes within a month, then I will buy one of those fancy Vichet photo, uh, photo couples, the analog ones, and we'll test that out because that will probably be a lot better. The next video is going to be the final in this short series on isolated voltage measurement, and we're going to be making use of Hall effect sensors, which are interesting. I'm also going to finally show a proper isolated voltage transducer, which this particular one makes use of the Hall effect as well, and I think this is probably going to blow everything that I've made completely out of the water. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.